The objective today is to describe the role DRM plays in Internet civil liberties. I don't always show the warm-up here on the videos, but I thought today I would. Usually students write down a snippet of code um, in order to help memorize this code better. It's called a code kata, but today I'm just having the students come in and write down what DRM stands for and EME. So it stands for Digital Rights Management and EME stands for Encrypted Media Extensions. So these two can be pretty confusing and it's a pretty technical lesson seeing how we're talking about um, technical details of protecting copyright, but a really interesting one. Um, I say here, interesting alphabet soup of terms today. Uh, what we've not started is talking about whether or not code should be copyrighted. Currently in progress, we're learning about hackers' relationship to copyright and what has been completed is a website about China and the, the way they have dealt with um, copyright over there. So, quick review. What's the difference between DRM and EFF? When yesterday's lesson you had learned about the EFF being an organization, a group, um, who's interested in protecting civil liberties. Here's a picture of them down here. Um, so the EFF, a group that protects civil liberties. Now, one way that companies, corporations can protect the content that they put on the internet is through something called DML, DRM, Digital Rights, um, what did it stand for again? Management. So in order to manage the rights of these corporations or these people who are publishing content online, they have this, okay, technical way of protecting it. And just this image right here should help you remember the DRM is locking down uh, the material that they're putting out online. So what's EME? Encrypted Media Extensions provides an API that enables web applications to interact with content protection systems to allow playback of encrypted audio and video. So if you remember from a, a lesson in our Unit 1, uh, we had talked about an API being like a waiter or being a way to help connect um, two pieces of software, okay? And the waiter analogy is a really good one. Just imagine an API as a waiter. You order food from a waiter and then that waiter goes and gets food from the kitchen, whatever it is that you're asking for, and then brings it to you. That's what an API does. If you have a, a website and you want people to be able to connect to Facebook or share your information on your website, Website to Facebook, where well, there's an API for that. Um, that API will go out, get the uh, data, get the code you need in order to share on Facebook. And it's a really convenient way of creating websites, creating software. Okay. This allows the use of HTML5 video to playback DRM wrapped content such as streaming video, services without the need for third party media, plugins like Adobe Flash or Microsoft Silverlight. In fact, a lot of people hate Adobe Flash, and yet it's still sticking around. I imagine it'll be eventually uh, gone from all of our systems. Now, when I say EME provides an API, what that does is keeps people from just playing audio and video like willy-nilly. Um, in order to play the audio or the video, you have a special uh, code that is ran on your machine and that allows um, you and only you to listen or view that particular item. And I believe uh, Netflix is the one who developed this. Want to read the code that they use to create EME? It's super amazing. You can go to this link here. And this is by Sam Dutton, and it was published January 16th, 2014, so pretty new. Uh, it was updated, though, even more recently in 2015. And this is very fascinating. And if you're a person who really likes and cares about the technical details, you can go down here. And here's the code that they use to make EME. Here's some more and more and more so definitely have a blast on that website the think right share for this is in your own words what is eme so from EFF to DRM, I told you it was an alphabet soup kind of lesson. It says basically the EFF hates DRM. And some people hate DRM so much, someone, a Reddit user analyzing the situation, suggested this. As far as I see it, the global internet community may need to acknowledge that it is time to declare the web as a whole a failed component of the internet and seek to route around it as the internet does best with failures. So wow, 
if you were to create a new internet, what could you call it? Be creative here. Maybe have the word net as in network in the name somehow, but I just want you to understand that this is um, how emotional people get when talking about DRM. Some people plan on creating a brand new internet just to avoid it. A great explain it to me like I'm five quote is we should be reinvesting time and energy in creating and using communications technologies that don't rely on uh, HTTP, web APIs, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or countless other web technologies. We should be seeking to make non-web technologies easy to use and accessible so the general public who may not be tech savvy can access them and be less intimidated. So think right here. Do you agree? This would be very difficult, but not impossible. Essentially, what I'm telling you right here is that we could create a brand new internet and we would not use HTML or CSS. We would be using something else. Okay, so as of July 7th, 2017, uh, Tim Berners-Lee has approved EME. He is the director of the W3 Worldwide Consortium. Uh, Berners-Lee previously fought to advance web users' rights, supporting net neutrality, privacy, and universal access. And this is a big deal. Tim Berners-Lee supported net neutrality. It is um, very strange that he is uh, such a supporter of EME. And in this lesson, I'm trying my best not to show my bias. Extra credit, if you can detect it, just inside of your Canvas page there. Just type in bias, colon, and whatever you think I am, pro or anti EME slash DRM, same thing. But for your think right share on this page, what could make someone change their mind so drastically? And because Tim Berners-Lee has uh, decided to support DRM, somebody has given him the Obedience Award. So let's get into the details of EME. Here's the deal. Companies like Netflix want you to be able to watch movies right from the web. The companies that own the movies and TV shows are willing to let Netflix do this, but they don't want it to be easy for you to pirate the movie. So they'd never allow Netflix to just offer an MP4 file to download and stream. They won't even allow streaming an MP4 without downloading it because it'd be easy to have another program capture that stream and save it. So it's really complicated how they try to uh, keep pirates at bay. The only thing they'll allow is called DRM. It encrypts a movie and decrypts it as it's being played in a way that's really hard to intercept. Now, hackers can definitely intercept this, don't get me wrong. Some valid criticisms of DMR DRM is that it prevents legal behavior like copying a movie you legally own and watching it on a different device. I experienced this once before when I helped start a company that was designed at digitally making all the, the all the movies and the photos that a person owned, um, making that into a digital copy. We did this um, often actually and completely within the law. The company did not succeed, however, 75% uh, of self started companies fail so I guess I am just part of the majority there um, it didn't quite work out but it sure was fun and I learned quite a bit another uh, criticism of DM DRM is it causes frustration and annoyance even for users who legally have the rights to something so if I do own a movie um, and I want to make a copy on it so I don't have to walk around with the DVD anymore or worry about that DVD getting scratched um, it's really hard for me to burn a copy of it because of DRM so think right share here are these legitimate criticisms why or why not Another legitimate criticism of DRM is it doesn't even work. A determined hacker can defeat it with a bit of work, even though it's harder for the average customer, so it doesn't actually make a dent in piracy. Previously, the only way to do DRM from within a web browser was using Flash. Now that's what EME does. It allows you to protect that audio or video uh, right there inside the web browser. So think right here, do you have any experience with Flash? I just bring that up because so many people <laughs> do not like Flash. And I keep bringing it up in this lesson. I want to make sure you understand what it is. Google and Mozilla are trying to get rid of Flash, so they supported making DRM available on the web via a new standard. EME is a system that allows sites like Netflix to offer DRM video playback uh, right in the browser. The EFF hates all DRM on moral grounds. Google and Mozilla have publicly said they dislike DRM, but think it's the only practical solution. 
and it's a big improvement over Flash. So Google and Mozilla are accepting this. In this case, it seems like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Google's enemy is Flash, so they support DRM, though they don't think of DRM as a very good friend. Think right here. Should Google and Mozilla support DRM? Here's a little comic for you. I want to be a superhero, but I hate flying skyscrapers, violence, loud noises, and direct sunlight. So the way to be a superhero to uh, your common techie would be to join the EFF. Surveillance Self-Defense EFF releases how-to guide to fight government spying. And in fact, if you donate $65, you can get this t-shirt. What they stand for is defending digital freedom. That's just the thing that they care about. And keep an eye on the news for updates. There is quite a bit of EFF on news-related items lately. So we're at the end of the lesson. Choose an IB question to answer about this lesson. And then your DOL. Describe what role DRM plays in Internet civil liberties. Just in case. Civil liberties is the state of being subject only to laws established for the good of community, um, especially with regard to freedom in action and speech.